I'm very active with other LGBT historians, both across the state in California and also across the country, presenting queer youth programs or LGBT history programs to queer youth. So I belong to a bunch of professional organizations and there's a lot of us doing this across the country where we really feel it's important to reach out as historians to get these stories to young people so they hear that they have this wonderful history that came before them. One of the things that I, so in terms of creating a, a, a good atmosphere, an excellent atmosphere for LGBT and Q&A students, is right now I am part of the uh, statewide AB 1266 initiative program that's it's been passed as a bill and now there's a whole group of us statewide that are working to support the bill and that's the gender neutral bill so that what we're doing is not only a rollout but we formed an organization to help keep it going in terms of we know we're against an, a statewide fight. There's a group that's still organizing and collecting petitions to overturn the bill, AB 1266, so we're in support of it. And then we're also trying to roll it out and do cultural competency trainings to school districts all across the country uh, to, to help roll out for their own states to do bills like AB 1266, but also in the state to support the bill and to support the aspects of the bill to make sure that uh, students across the state of California are safe uh, in the classroom, in the bathroom, in the locker room, all across the campus that they are allowed to be themselves while they're on campus. Uh, I came out in terms of knowing my own identity. When I grew up as a little girl, I didn't know, but when I came out, I came screaming out of the closet at right around the cusp of 1819, fell in love with a woman and I have not looked back. It's been great. My favorite movie, I would have to say, is a movie that I saw about six, seven years ago now. It's called um, Paragraph 175, and it's a movie about the gay men who wore the triangles in the concentration camps on their tunics. They wore the pink triangles, and it's a documentary made by a wonderful pair of filmmakers um, who would also, also, this was their second or third uh, film that they made. Several of them, they made the, also the Times of Harvey Milk. Uh, another wonderful documentary. And Paragraph 175 uh, talks about the gay men who, again, really were just treated horribly in the camps. The ones with the pink triangles were singled out for particularly abusive treatment in the labor camps and, and some of the experiments that went on. And one of the things that struck me about the film was that there were so few of them left, that the tens of thousands of men who had worn that pink triangle that there was only 12 left in all of Europe that they could find that had worn the pink triangle. And it really struck me that, that we were losing a whole generation of LGBT elders to tell their stories. So seeing that film is, is what got me excited about starting my own history project here in California. Well, I would have to say the rainbow because um, it's not well known, but there's not a lot of us left, but I was one of the original rainbow flag volunteers. Uh, I helped to make the two original rainbow flags in June of 1978. And so I have such fond memories. So whenever anyone asks me about a favorite color, I usually say rainbow because I remember so fondly working on those two huge flags. They were 40 by 60 and they were raised at UN Plaza in San Francisco in June of 1978 and they are the original rainbow flags. So I would say rainbow is my favorite color. <laughs>